digital marketing and PR uh, before getting into image consulting. And one thing I, I've noticed in my, with image consulting, image consulting, I have had many a client, many a female client come to me and say, oh my God, my husband, boyfriend, significant other, his style is horrible. He dresses like a caveman. It's just horrible. And I need you to help me get the man back that I married. Playing from Kevin Samuel's iPhone. I need you to help me get the man back that I married. And I'm like, okay, well, cool. We can do that. We can, we can do that. Helping you get the man back that you married is one thing. I've had plenty of girlfriends. I mean, plenty of women who had boyfriends say, hey, man. I need uh, you to help me get my boyfriend back. He's a great guy, but his sense of style is just terrible. And, and it's starting to turn me off. So is there anything you can do to help bring the spark back into our relationship? I'm cool. And they came with cash in hand, ready to do this. I've had men come and say the same thing. Hey, man, my girlfriend, my wife, my significant other just doesn't look at me the same way, you know, uh, as she used to. When she comes home from these corporate events or whatever, she has all these stories about all these funny, witty, charming men just like yourself. And I just don't feel like I can keep up and compete. You know, I'm a I'm a blue collar guy. You know, I make good money. You know, I own my business I can provide, but uh but for some reason I just can't do that. So let's talk about it. Yeah. And I like using the straw. So get over it. Uh, before we get into it, I want to do a shout out to say what's going on. I want to bring uh, something to your attention. I want to bring something to your attention. In the 70s, from 1970 to 1975, there was this little show this little inconsequential, insignificant show that uh, changed the way a lot of people looked at uh, blue-collar men, white-collar men, and it did a lot to change the landscape of a lot of things. This is from a TV show called The Jeffersons. And it chronicled a black man by the name of George Jefferson. He and his wife, uh, Wheezy, and his son, Lionel, moved to the Upper East Side of New York City. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a former New York City resident, former Manhattan resident. To live on the Upper East Side of New York, you have to have some serious money, like I did. I moved from the Upper East Side uh, down to the, low, the Upper West Side, right about Hell's Ki in Hell's Kitchen. The Upper East Side is where all the blue bloods and the old, old, old money stays. I mean, to move to the Upper East Side, if you have an Upper East Side address, especially back then, you had made it. Black men that were on that side of town were doormen. They were cab drivers. They didn't live there. Okay? Wheezy, Louise. Okay? And for George Jefferson to have moved his family from the borough of Queens to the Upper East Side was an accomplishment. An accomplishment, bar none. How many people in the chat room ever watched an episode of The Jeffersons? If you watched the episode of The Jeffersons, put a one in the chat room. Come on, this is going to be interactive. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. How many of you watched an episode of The Jeffersons? Because actually The Jeffersons was a spinoff from a show called All in the Family. And All in the Family dealt a lot with the racist, white, a prejudiced white guy named Archie Bunker. And he was, it was a, it was a, it was a, a pivotal show. All right. So I'm seeing so many people who said they watched the Jeffersons. 
the Jeffersons. That was the first time you could see black. This is pre Cosby. This is back when all the black exploitation films are going on, and it was it, and you really didn't see black men doing much or nothing, except being pimps, hustlers, drug dealers. You know, we we really we really weren't much of anything by this time. So to get something like the Jeffersons. Brothers felt like they had made it. Now, somebody in the chat room, one of the people who put a one in the chat room, what I need to know, we got 170 likes, man. We need to get the likes over, we need to get the likes over 350. We need to get the likes over 350, and we're going to need at least five folks to throw something in there. Juxtapose the Jefferson. There you go, Tiffany. There's a juxtapose for you. Shout out to the PhD Tiffany. The one that don't want to get married because she's a PhD. Juxtapose that with good times about a black family in Chicago with a hardworking father by the name of James Evans. Now I need somebody in the chat room to tell me what college did George Jefferson graduate from? What college did George Jefferson graduate from? Again, if you curse, talk crazy, you're going to be timed out. Express yourself like the accomplished people you are. Road Tide 504, that is for you. Jared, Dark Force, Tony, what are y'all talking about? Rome, what? Rich? Jared? What are y'all talking about? He didn't graduate from college. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're telling me that this black man who moved up onto the Upper East Side of New York City moved his family from Queens to the Upper East Side? And only didn't graduate from college? How in the heck did this happen? I mean, he's a black man. How did that happen? He had to be on Wall Street or something like that. He had to have a white collar job. I mean, come on. What are, what are you telling me? Joe, are you telling me this brother wasn't a doctor, lawyer, a, 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 a mover and shaker on Wall Street? He wasn't a banker? He wasn't a real estate mogul? Okay, he at least was a drug dealer, right? I mean, if he didn't do it the white collar way, he had to sell at least a white powder. Are you telling me? What are you talking about, big old swole? James, are you kidding me? How can a black man move from Queens where they got more dead people than alive people? They got more people buried in Queens than are living in Queens. How in the heck did you get a black man to go from Queens to the richest neighborhood in one of the most expensive cities in the world without going to Harvard or Yale or, or MIT or something. I mean, he was, he, I mean, how did this happen? He had to do something. I mean, he wasn't a lawyer. I mean, this is back in the days before massive computer systems and he, he didn't wear a suit to work. I mean, he didn't go to Howard. I mean, it's, what the heck could this man have done? ZB says he was also a fictitious character. To you, he was. And that's part of the problem. ZB, are you a man or a woman? This man who moved his family from Queens to the Upper East Side of town to where his wife didn't even have to work and their grown son could go to college and he even had a room. And he, his, his wife was living so good that in that apartment they had, they had a maid. They had a maid in an apartment on the Upper East Side. They didn't have no palatial country home. His wife did not work. She didn't have 5011 babies. 
She didn't have eight kids hanging off of her. And she wasn't no super fine. Oh, don't get ahead of yourself, Godfather. But she had a maid. Her job was to get up and to be Miss Blue Henry. Because George Jefferson was a blue collar man. He was a, he owned he was a he owned dry cleaners. He owned dry cleaners. Ownership. What did I talk about in that video I did last week? So many women skip right over the blue collar men, try to go get white collar men, and you don't realize George Jefferson wasn't seventy five years old when he he didn't have to get his wife over to the Upper East Side in the Walker to where she had a good four years before a hip gave out. No, no, she was in her late 30s or 40s. Late 30s or 40s. She had a whole lot of life ahead of her to sit down, put her feet up, and just be Miss Blue Henry. What do we notice about Louise Jefferson? Louise Jefferson was never going to be confused with being a beauty queen. She was dark skin, short hair, and rather fluffy. But unlike a lot of women around that time, she went ahead and got with a man who was working at a dry cleaner, who was ambitious, enterprising, Married that guy, and he built an empire. How many of her college educated, aka Delta, you know, white collar? <laughs> hmm. How many women today would skip right over George Jefferson? Do single educated women have contempt or disdain for blue collar men? I will say yes. I have personally heard and witnessed far more. See, when I gave that story at the first of the show about the women that came to me to try to get their husbands a makeover, they were not black. Never had this happen with a black woman. Had it happen with white women rather often. Started my business, come to get their husbands' makeovers. Told you I got two kids named after me. Why is that? Well, like it or not, Blake Henry or Keith Henry in this particular case, Blue Henry's outnumber Blake Henry's by a fact, by a large amount. At least five to one. And that's an income. That's just income. That's not in sheer number of positions. So why is it that when you're on a show like I was on earlier today with Obsidian, you got Miss Private Caller or whatever talking about, it's not as though sisters won't date blue collar men. It's just that, you know, when a sister goes to college and she gets educated, she expands her horizons and she starts to look at the world differently. And a lot of these blue collar guys may be good guys, but they don't want to do anything. They're not cultured. They're not cultured. They're boring. I hear this so often from black women regarding blue collar men. I've heard, I've had black women diss blue collar men in my face thinking I was going to laugh at the joke. <laughs> yeah. See, over there, the guy shining shoes, he's a worker. You're a boss. We bosses over here. Not realizing I come from blue collar families, blue collar roots. Let me tell you something. Black women, your disdain, contempt, whatever word you want to put in there, for the reason you overlook enterprising, ambitious, blue-collar men is why so many of you would die alone. 
Let's get let's cut to the chase. Let's cut to the chase. Blake Henry, the Blake Henrys, their wives uh, are sevens or better in the face or eights or better in the in, in the body. That means if you're a six, you don't get a you don't get a Blake Henry. Not unless you get him while you're in college. After you graduate from college, once you're 23 or older, you don't get a Blake Henry. You don't get to make those demands like that. A uh, love at first sight show that we were looking at. By the way, uh, they chose to not to end their marriage. They chose to end their marriage. The brother that didn't really want to work and a sister who wanted to be a stay at home wife. Who <laughs> couldn't see that coming? This is the stay in your lane argument. See, Weezy stayed in her lane. And we got far too many sisters who think because you have a piece of paper with a seal on it and somebody's degree, that makes you more physically attractive. Nope, it doesn't. You don't get a Blake Henry. You're not You're not attractive enough. <gasps> Did I say that? Yeah, I said it. I said it because, the, like it or not, the CJ Kings of the world got that pick. 100% of, 100% of the 20, the 100% of the top 20% of women want 5% of men. So this conversation is for the women who haven't screwed their lives up. The women who are not 35 plus, who've already got far, too far in their career, too much baggage on them, and think too highly of themselves. If you, I've said it to another caller. Have you noticed that the older... Or the or the more degreed or the higher earning a woman is, the less the the less she is willing to compromise. That's fine. You don't have to. Well, let me explain a couple of things. First of all, go back and watch my other show. Let me say this definitively, without a shadow of a doubt. Salute to my blue collar brethren. I said it before and I said it again. White collar men ain't shit without you. We aren't shit without blue collar men. The world runs on what blue collar men do with their hands. Yeah, white collar men may have enough money to buy the house, but we can't build the house. So the only reason this kind of exists right now is because we've civilized the world in general and got first world problems. But if the power grid went out and the zombies started coming out, uh, give me all the you going to want to be around the blue collar men, not the white collar guy. Go look on Bear Gorilla's Survival Island. I told this story to a blue collar brother earlier. See, when you got a bunch of men on the island and they got to survive and there's no food, no water, da da da, you got to kill and eat every, you got three meals to provide for every day with no refrigerator, no grocery store, right? You don't have time for a lot of high fluted ideas. Hunger is setting in. Three days without water, you're dead. Go watch episode, go watch the first season. And the first season, there's a guy in there from the rough scrabble parts of uh, London. Blue collar guy. And they got real classism over there. And he didn't like the white collar guy. He thought he was a pamper pansy. The white collar guy, they found a net. It needed to be repaired. It needs some stuff done on it. The white collar guy said, you know what? Yeah, you're the only you're the best fisherman and the only fisherman. But you can only catch one or two or three fish a day. You're just keeping us going. We're not going to get any bigger. We're just we're just not going to die as long as you fish because the rest of us can't. The blue collar guy had to feed them. But the white collar guy got a chance to put the nets together and work on this, work on that. And the net failed time after time after time after time after time after time after time. But one time the net finally worked and it came up big, 21 fish. Then another time it came up with 33 fish. The white collar guy came up with an idea that multiplied magnitudes more fish. Remember that? Magnitudes more. Magnitudes more. So, a lot of women would look and say, look at the, what the white collar did. The white collar guy made sure that not only he could eat, but he got the entire group. He provided enough bounty for everybody to where 
that if there were women there and children, everyone would have ate. The blue collar man worked hard, but he only provided a little. The white collar man worked with his mind and provided a lot. And that's the bullshit mythology you've been you've been sold. But let me tell you something. What we as men know, the white collar guy who put the nets together, he had nothing but respect for the blue collar man because the blue collar man got up there and did the work every god darn day. And he brought in the two or three little fish that it took to keep the white collar guy going, to have the energy to go back and do everything. The white collar guy would have been dead before he could have provided the solution without the blue collar guy. See, men know this about one another. That's why we don't diss each other like that. You ladies just look at outcomes. Well, his pile is bigger than that pile and his suit and his tie looks better than this blue collar and that's your problem. Because remember ladies, you're marrying a husband, a partner for life. You're not marrying a check. Why do other, why do non-black women seem to have this figured out? Why? Why do non-black women not tend to have the same amount of disdain, contempt for blue collar men? And I listened to this woman try to sit back and explain as to why, you know, you know, well, you know, it's not really that bad. And, you know, it comes down to this. You're in love with the you're in love with the thought of what it could be instead of what it really is. Blue collar men, marriage and education. Dear educated women, blue collar men can earn great livings. It's worth remembering if you're looking for a husband or a partner, the U.S. economy is aching for more highly skilled, technologically and trained people. But if the men end up limiting their eventual marriage, but if men end up limiting their eventual marriage prospects, if they pursue careers in the trades or other jobs that don't require a four-year degree, some portion of women who have bachelor's or post-bachelor degrees avoid romantic involvement with such guys holding out for those BAs, MBAs, JDs, which is to say they seek potential husbands who have degrees that are more generally esteemed than those with a, who have earned in a year or two. Same with the kinds of training acquired by our apprenticeships or armed forces. This is a vital matter because young men who enjoy working with their hands might choose not to pursue careers in construction, manufacturing, for fear women will dismiss them out of hand as life partners. But do women with more advanced degrees really steer clear of men in trades and, and similar fields? Do they really give men with uh, advanced degrees more position? And the answer in the black community, undoubt, without a doubt, it's called marrying down. How many blue collar men know for a fact you have out earned your black female counterpart? But because she has an office job, she has the nerve to look down on you and guys like you while she's in tens of thousands of dollars of debt. Happens all the time. Why, sisters? Why? 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 Why do you have such disdain for blue collar men? It ain't it ain't how the men look at each other. Let's also answer these questions. Blue collar men, white collar men can't do shit without blue collar men. That's why we respect them. Blue collar men have, in my experience, tend to have more class than a lot of white collar women. Oh shit. Why? Because far too many white collar women are so rude, so disrespectful, so contemptuous so contentious with how in which they handle blue collar men. And we're talk and I'm not talking about the guy who's just working. I'm talking about the blue Henrys, the guys who you you blow it because you fast over George Jefferson because all you see is a dry cleaner. You don't see that he has he's doing that to learn the business and he's getting his credit together and getting money so he can buy a chain of dry cleaners. You don't even you don't get to that point in the conversation. 
You just go in there and hand him your cleaning. Then when he ends up marrying Becky, because this is what's happening. See, George back in the 70s married a dark-skinned woman because George wouldn't have been able to get one of them high-end Whit Whitley Gilberts. He married Wheezy. But now he's marrying Becky and Marisol. Ooh, damn. Did I say this? Did I say this? That's right. Colorism. Ain't no colorism. Black men don't want dark skinned black women. Mm mm. Mm mm. What black men are you talking about? You jumping over a whole group of black men who are skilled tradespeople, who in any other group would be superstars. Because they're not cultured. You can't take them nowhere. I can't go nowhere with these guys. They're boring. They're uncouth. And Obsidian actually brought this point up. If these shows the last couple, three weeks have shown nothing else, black men, you need to understand something. Right, wrong, or indifferent. This is the expectation. Pay attention. Regardless as to what they say, black women want and expect Men to pay all 100% of the bills, all without exception. Don't listen to what they say. This is what they want, and it, this is what they want. This is what they want, and this is what they expect. So, when you hear that woman talking about 50 50, well, can't we do 70 30? That 70-30 only comes along once they feel good that you can actually pay 100%. At least I get a sister on the, that when I was going off on this sister in Houston talking about you're broke if you don't earn two or three times as much as me. She said, I will pay for a man to do something if I know and have seen and validated that he makes more money and blah, 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 blah. I give her credit for at least saying the truth. Now, she'll never get that. They expect you to pay all the bills. So understand something. If you're a black man and you want to get married or if you want to ha and have children, you might as well, and you expect to marry a black woman, you might as well get, you better just divorce yourself of this 50-50 shit. Because this is what they want. That 50-50 argument goes away. I didn't make these rules, guys. And just because they say they'll accept it, okay, try that. Try it. Because compromise versus sacrifice. I think this has a lot to do with that 80% divorce rate uh, because, like it or not, well, I'm not going down that path. Everybody got work to do. Everybody got work to do. But the thing is, ladies, the blue collar men are the ones that will be more likely to have stable income for the longest. They're not at the whim of companies and corporations or balance sheets or internal politics. I said it last week. Blue collar men work around men. You don't have to worry about blue collar men having an affair with somebody they work with unless they on the DL. So why is it? Why is it, ladies? Why is it that you have so much disdain for your black male for your black blue collar men. Why do you have so much disdain for Blue Collar Bay? Who is Blue Collar Bay? Blue Henry Bay. Blue, color of his collar, Henry, high earner, not rich yet, and Bay. Bold, ambitious, and enterprising. See, blue collar men like George Jefferson, they have to be bold. They're not just sitting on working first shift until they die. First shift is a means to an end because they're ambitious. They're looking to put in overtime and work as hard as they can. They're working, working, working. They are working. They are ambitious. When they're not at work, they are looking to do something better. They're looking to improve themselves. These are the self-talk guys. The guys who pick up, uh, they'll take a class at nighttime just because they want to learn philosophy. See, here's one thing on the blue collar side. If you're a blue Henry, 
you do yourself better by being a more well-rounded man so you can be able to um so you'll be able to uh network with other guys because you're not going to fit the blue collar worker never wanting to own anything world you're always going to be thinking bigger than a worker no insult to the workers but that's it they're always going to feel like why are you always trying to be that we just trying to get overtime no you're going so you're going to have to self-educate self-teach yourself and see this is where a lot of women from other races end up coming in and winning women from other cultures are willing to sit back And evaluate a man based upon not just uh, the dirt under his fingernails. They'll listen to how he speaks. If he's a blue collar man, but he has a better vocabulary and a better reading list than you. Hello. Don't you think that's odd? Or do you even get that far? (laughs) Or do you even get that far? Do you even get that far? How many? <clears throat> do single educated women have contempt or disdain for blue collar men outright? That's the question on the table. That's the question on the table. And I want to hear from some of you guys. Let me do me, let me do something real quick. I'm going to play a little music while I'm going to go look in the uh, super chats. And we're going to bring in the second part of the show. Second part of the show. Woo! The call-in line is open. M. Can you make a video on how to keep and maintain that blue Henry once you get them? And you're already a stay-at-home wife? Get on the show, ladies. Weezy didn't work. Weezy didn't work, man. Weezy did not work. Weezy had a maid. Weezy had the life. Somebody asked, can you, can you tell me how to get a blue hen, a, 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 can you tell me how to keep a, a Blake Henry once you get him? Um, what the meeting ended oh we got to do this again no let me do this again i got to start the meeting all over again here we go moderators drop the new link in the chat room okay my question is here's the question lady asked me can i show you how to keep a a blake my question is this brie why do you want Blake? Why do you pick Blake over blue? What is it about you women that always want to go for Blake? See, that's the real question. Can you can you tell me, make a video on how to keep Blake Henry? Uh, the short answer is yes, I can. And the, and the long answer is I will not do it for free. If you want that, you're going to have to pay a premium for that. Get your one-on-one. Yep. Yep. That's what that's what you're going to have to do. Because if you want to be a stay-at-home wife to a, a high-earning white-collar man, you're going to pay just like your non-black counterparts.
Here we go. How many of these women would be ashamed to bring home a blue collar man? How many women would be ashamed to bring a blue collar man, a blue Henry around her sorority sisters? Her mom and them. How many? How many of you ladies can honestly say, Godfather, I feel you, but I would be so ashamed to bring this guy who's a trucker around my family, even though I know he has plans to buy several more trucks and open up a fleet in the training school. Hot lips. Uh, somebody got to tell you. You're not on the screen, so I can't see you. You won't be on the screen. There you go. I'm ashamed I'm not bringing. I'm ashamed if I'm not bringing anyone home other than you. Well. Come on, ladies. Testing guests. I don't know who this is. She says, I'm not ashamed. Okay. So let's be honest. How many college educated women dismiss blue collar men right out of hand when you're in your right out of school? This is where this is important. Right out of college? Where you're 23 to 28, how many of you are dismissing Blue Henrys out, outright when your white counterparts are marrying them? How many of you? How many black women dismiss Blue Henrys in their early 20s outright because he can't get the time off because he got to because he can't run down to Jamaica or whatever. He said, my boy owns a fleet of trucks with routes all over the U.S. earns over 500K profit. Regular looking dude with a house in PA sitting on 20 acres. There you go. How many women did not realize that they were really screwing themselves over by avoiding, by, by thinking they were too good for these men. Let me also say this. Let me also say this unequivocally, ladies. If no one else has told you, let me be the first one to tell you. You are not doing blue collar men a favor by dating them. Let me get, let me be 100% clear with that. You are not doing blue collar men a favor by dating them. Where am I getting a lot of this stuff from? Because I hear, I've heard this from a lot of my life. College educated women over, who just have such contempt for these guys. Like, yeah, I will consider dating him if he's this, 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 this. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you five foot four and 120 pounds? Do you have an 800 credit rating and no debt? I mean, with the kind of demands you're making, are you that fine? Really? Too bad most of the workers are just in their 20s. Too bad most of the workers that are in their 20s are not in Los Angeles. See, what you find out is also a lot of a lot of women just are afraid to to get honest with it. It's like, dang, can I hear you? No, I can't. I cannot hear you. Um, but 
the microphone works just well. Turn on original sound. Try again. Come on in. Somebody get on the show. I want to see if somebody can, if I can hear you. I need as I need a snow bunny. They are F A the long hail. Long haul. First off, dude, you need to learn how to spell. What are you talking about? They are F A the long haul. That's not how you spell haul. See, so I go back to that that show, Married at Love at First Sight. You got to know where you rank, ladies. What do you? What is your SMV? Your sexual marketplace value. Are you hot enough to demand Blake Henry? And understand something, Blake Henry, there are not a lot of, especially since today, so many guys aren't going to college. These guys aren't just going to be de dealing with women that aren't, aren't going to be what they want. Look, I, I didn't make the rules. And my thing is this, how many women would love to be able to get their minds right how many women would love to be able to get their minds right and, and get to the point where like, you know what? Damn this. I, I, I'm i good. I'm ready to actually put in the six months of uh, six months or a year of training to, to get to get my shit together so I can end up being a better catch. Thank Johnson. So you're not getting white women spelling like that. You're damn right. You're not getting no women spelling like that. Tank, no. See, shout out to Eric. I'm not putting any group of women on any pedestal, but I will tell you this, that non-black women are, have been taught to go after their mates to strategically. Um, I have a question for a lot of uh, sisters. If you could not use your sex what else could it, what else would you be bringing to the table no heat no judgment but if you could not use your feminine sexuality because there comes a time man you know you know a lot of high earners they're not having butt naked freaky circus sex for 30 for, for two hours blake henry is not coming home from a 12 16 hour day and spending an hour in bed with you he does not have that time you're going to get 15 good minutes. 15, maybe 30 minutes. Actually, closer to 22 minutes. A 30-minute sitcom is what you get. And most of that is you servicing him. You get what Bernie Mac said. You get 50 good pumps. These guys are not trying to uh, that they should not have to make you come five times. You should come just sitting in the house looking at all this bounty. Can we talk about it? You you want to be a stay at home wife, have a nanny, be a soccer mom, have kids in private school. Then you want your husband to come home after sixteen. 12, 16 hour days, and you want him to make love to you like a like an 18 year old college student. No. You're going to be pleasing him. See that 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 already that, that already pissed off women. A lot of women are like, what? So I gotta so I can't get no, no, I'm not saying what you have to. I'm just saying, my boys. My boys have wives that realize how fortunate a position they are, and they're happy to be there. They're happy to be there. Hello? 
Let me see. Hello. Hello. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now, Kev? Uh, yeah, I can. Cool. It works. Speak up. Can you hear me now, Kev? Yeah, I Sorry, can. Man. I can. What you got for me? All right. Um, first and foremost, Kev, um, long time fan. Um, me and my business partner. Do, do me a favor. Do, do me. Do me one favor. Yes, brother. Just call me Kevin. I, Kev, I just don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, no problem. No, Kevin, no problem Thank at you. all, brother. Um, long time fan. Me and my business partner. Uh, we've been following you for well over a year. Okay. Um, we're blue collar. We're both retired NYP detectives. Oh. And uh, and we and literally, we are like in total awe of the subject matter because um, we have experienced this. Mm. Um, I've dated women, nurses, um, attorneys, etc. You know, they'll say things like, hey, you know, once you finish a degree, X, Y, and Z. Meanwhile, I make more than them. Wait, wait, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Don't you, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't police yes. officers have, like, pretty damn good benefits? I'm, I'm, listen, Kev, I'll tell you right now, I have been um, seriously injured on a job. Hmm. I get 75% of my pension. Wow. And I'm able to do whatever I want to do outside of that, and I earn outside of that. Uh -huh whether it's via security, whether it's private investigations, et cetera. Mm. I'm also an expert witness also. Mm. So we have that range of doing so. I, and I talked to one brother on. that he was like just turning 40 and, and he was doing high-end security for high-end corporate stuff or like- Yes, yes, you have co yes. There's, there's so much money in that stuff. It's Listen, in New, in New York City, if you are a retired cop, this is say you didn't get rank at all. You're a retired cop, plain and simple. The average retired cop, um, average cop in New York City is making over hundred thousand dollars a year. You make detective. There's three. There's three. There's three tiers to it. It's third grade, second grade, first grade. Third grades make anywhere north of now top pay of 140. Second graders make anywhere north of 160. First graders make 180. Mm. You retire if you retire with a half of that. That's half. So if you just to say you make it to second grade, that's half of that. You retire for the rest of your life as you're breathing with full benefits. <laughs> but, and so let me ask you this. How is how yeah. often is it you see your white Hispanic counterparts over 30 over who are in their mid to late 20s, 30s who are married? Oh, they, oh, they, they they're married really quickly because their community understands exactly what they have. <laughs> exactly. See, they, they, they have what is called the Long Island princesses. And these are girls who work at Applebee's, work at Hooters, that get with cops, firemen, et cetera, because they know about the benefits. They know their pension system better than they do. Are you ladies freaking listening? <laughs> so, I mean, this is, this is like, you know, and you'll have sisters that sit here that have some you no know, disdain, you know, to cops, etc. And I can understand that. I can't. I mean, because of certain. You know, well, I mean, in a sense, well, you know what, Kev? Like, I grew up in a, I grew up in the inner city, I, and I can understand the, uh, the angst. But shit. at the same time, though, uh, you're in therapy. Brother, you'll take I, care of all that shit, especially when you're sitting at home and you got officer friendly going to work. Fuck that. It, and you know what? You know what's funny is that most of my white counterparts' wives don't work. That's all I'm That's saying. That's the joke. When I lived in my- That's the joke. That's the joke. It's like, they don't work. And we call them the Long Island princesses. When I lived- Because- Go ahead, go ahead. Go no, go ahead, go ahead. You tell them. Yeah, we, we, we call them the Long Island princesses because these guys, when I worked in narcotics, we were getting 60 hours a month for overtime, mm -hmm. whether we liked it or not. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, so you, you're, you're working around the clock every week. It, it is what it is. You're on call. Yeah, I mean, so you're working all different types of hours. So these guys used to kill it. Their wives are not working right. at all. Their kids are going to private school. They're live. They're paying fifteen thousand to eighteen to twenty thousand dollars in taxes a year. It's a big myth that people just don't even understand because you're being told something through television or some other type of medium. But in New York City, this is what it is. Well, let me say that. Let, 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 let me let me say this. And uh, Officer Falk was about to get in here. When I was my last serious relationship, 
we lived in a very, very nice subdivision in Moore. Moore, Oklahoma, you know, very nice. It was one of the best neighborhoods that I ever lived in. And there were cops all around the place. No one was coming in that neighborhood because the uh, the units were, I guess, I guess that's the word, the unit, the, car, the cop cars are sitting in the driveway. And these houses were huge. And guess what? The cops would roll out. The wives are sitting up in the house going to the local Starbucks. And it was white as snow. And now I'm in there because I'm a corporate exec. And my girl, I'm like, and I saw brothers living in there. Single as hell. These big ass houses. And they, and of course, they never had a problem with having women. But these dudes are like it. I don't, I don't get it, man. Charles, what's going on, man? Woo! The doctor of style of profile is here, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all, y'all got it for a second, man. I don't understand why women is... See, this is the problem. Number one, I never had problem getting women in my adult life. God forbid, you know, if you want if you want if you want women, just put a gut in a badge or they'll just flock to you. I don't give a damn what nobody says. <sighs> Jesus Christ. The amount of overtime, God, and I'm on a promotion list to be a sergeant. Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, man, I, I tell you, if you, I dare any woman to look down upon a blue collar guy, an electrician, a plumber, even the, and, and let's tell the dirty little secret. A lot of these blue collar guys are making more money than some of these, uh, than a lot of these uh, so-called educated women. Mm -hmm. But they won't take advantage of these guys. No, you know, great looking guys, great personality guys. Oh, he's under me because he works on he works on plumbing. Can you do it? Huh. Do you know how much? Do you know how much the guy who comes into your corporate office gets paid just to look at that damn pipe? Right. I don't get it, man. Yeah. I don't get it, but a man who works police, fire, they have fraternity of brothers in their profession, plus they work for the, I don't want to use the wrong words, just call it the state. They got benefits. Yeah. I'm like, and, and, and you don't see many broke thing. firefighters. <laughs> you, got, you forgot one thing, Kevin. Positions of power. Well, I know a lot of cops who go on to start their private security firms and do exactly. security for international businessmen. And I'm like, Jesus. Do you know who I was security for? Who's that? I actually bodyguarded Stephanie Mills in common. Vivica A. Fox. Hmm. Freeway. That's just making a thousand to twelve hundred dollars that day. Exactly. Well, got gun will travel. Exactly. Well, ladies, you heard it coming from the horse's mouth, per se. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the show. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Woo, Appreciate thank you guys you. chiming in and giving some credibility to this because sometimes when it, when it comes out of somebody like me, my mouth, they're like, eh, you're just talking. Mm -mm. I just look at my non, I just look at your non-black counterparts. The average white woman is not a model. The average Henry's, I mean, I mean, really, you went to college, sister. The average white girl was not a swimsuit model. Have you never asked yourself? Yeah, you, now you knew the Beckys and the Chads. The homecoming queen, the football, the, the, the uh, champion quarterback. We, we know those. But what about the run of the mill chicks, Meredith. Well, Meredith was probably a, a queen, but you know what I mean. Karen, Melissa, you know, not the B names, you know, the girls who were just, you know, they were five, sixes. When they got really kind of made up, they could be adjustable sevens, you know, just kind of. You know, they never got fat, but they are, or anything. But they were just cutish. You know, they could be seen in public, 
but no one's, they didn't, they weren't, they weren't, guys were knocking the door down to try to get them. But how are these average to cute women still housewives and your fine ass is never been married? Single as frick. Let's talk about it. How, ladies? How? Because they don't look over blue collar men. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't want to go too deep into this, but a lot of this stuff started with baby boomers, my, my parents' generation, the women of my parents' generation looking at their mother's generation and saying they didn't want to be, be like them. Well, what I'm saying is, is I don't care how you're raised. You give yourself the best shot at giving you, you it is smart to get, have as many options as possible, but it's, but there's going to come a time you got to pick. Let's just talk. Let's be honest. You got to settle. Settle. Yes. Yeah, settle. Settle. Yes. You got to settle. You got to get off the roller coaster. You got to get off the ride. It's 24 years old. I, he's suitable. He's great. He has, I, I, I've done my homework. He's going to be able to provide it. I'm settling and I'm going to be his for the rest of my life. Instead of trying to always see hypergamy, always trying to find the next bit, bit, bigger dude, hypergamy hurts you. Because men look at hypergamous women and they have no sympathy for them. Shout out to uh, Ant uh, Antoine Wade. Men look at hypergamous women, women who try to uh, level up and continue to get the next better deal. <laughs> if you don't think Keith Henry can look as watching your moves and seeing that you monkey branch from here to here to here to here to here. You are a climber. And my boys avoid climbers because climbers will drop you for the next branch. Why is it so hard to, so a lot of women need to be told they need to settle. I use the word settle because that's what it sounds like to a lot of sisters. You got to settle. No, and that actually what it means is you just need to make a good choice. Stop trying to find Mr. Perfect. You're not perfect. Notice the women. Marcia C. Why won't you get on the show? Mm-hmm. Vicky knows how to identify potential. Mm-hmm. Toya, why won't y'all get on the show? Because if you're learning, you can't learn from just general information. You got some basic questions. You have to show your face. But there are, there are 835 people watching. And here's the real, here's the real deal. I want to see happy people. Anybody would tell you, when I started this year, it's about happy Henry. Henrys are happier when they have women in their lives. That, that I'm there to make them happy. I'd rather have my Henry's with no women versus having them with women that are going to be chaos. But I can't lie and say that 95% of my, my Henry's, they want wives. They want So I want the best caliber of women. And God, did, did, did Wheezy look unhappy? I mean, she may have had a complaint or two. I guarantee it's a hell of a lot easier to complain from the 72nd floor of an Upper East Side apartment with a maid she wasn't complaining about the, the gas being turned off. The lights not happening. You'll take Wheezy's complaints. Shout out, Mr. G. Who, who, what sister in here don't want Wheezy's complaints? Hmm? Marsha, you want Wheezy's complaints? How about this? How many women in a chat room would love to just say, or willing to raise your hand and say, I want to be married, happily married. If you want to be happily, if you want to be happily married, put a one in the chat room, ladies.
Miss French Twist. A lot of men who go for good looking women. Let me go ahead and put this out here because Sandra Bullock is not a great look. What you, let me go ahead and put this in here because sound like a sound like a uh, sound like a woman we talk to. So Miss French Twist says a lot of good looking men who go for good looking women with great bodies will drop you for the next better looking woman. How do you know that? Have you been dropped for a better looking woman, Miss French Twist? Look at all the people. Wheezy was George's mother. Wheezy wasn't George's mother. Louise was Wheezy. I don't know, Miss French Twist. Did you get left for a better looking woman? That's what I want to know. Tank Johnson, he said, that's a lot. I, I want to see that question. While we're waiting for Miss French Twist to answer the question, said they don't want to be married uh okay see here's where you about to get yourself hurt lady so miss french Swiss, here's what she said instead of answering the question what did she do she came in and said men are visually motivated and always looking so what was it what do we know about miss french Swiss, guys what do we know about her a woman who does not answer a direct question with a direct answer, and she either answers a question with a question, or she moves the goalpost or deflects. What do we know about them? They are disingenuous at best, and likely the problem in their lives. So all she wants to come over here and do is have talking points. Miss French Twist, you're not going to be allowed to do that over here. You're not going to be allowed to do that over here, ma'am. Well, I'm not going to say she's ugly or fat, but I will tell you she's not happy. She's damn sure not happy. Miss French Twist, the question was, she made a statement that said, men who go for good looking women and who are in good shape will leave you for a better looking woman. And I said, that's bull. I said, has that happened to you? And she didn't answer the question. She said, men are visually motivated. <laughs> so in other words, no, it didn't happen to me. Didn't happen to her. See, no, I'm married to a great man who makes good money. Whew. Put him on the phone, Miss French Twist. I, I swear to God, I get more happy women over here with contrary points of view who have no avatar. <laughs> I should play the lottery. I get the, I get the, I get, this is better than bingo. I get women who are married, happy to men who make lots of money, but they're contrary and no avatar. Hmm. This doesn't seem to work out in life. Oh, we don't believe her. Miss French Twist, you are not married. <laughs> Miss French Twist, your husband is not, your boyfriend is not making a lot of money. <laughs> Miss French Twist, don't come in here and think you can lie to us. We know better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Stacey Young, what's going on, Stacey Young? How many women? Honestly, 
I don't have to work. No. You, okay, well, let me go ahead and help you. Go ahead and time you out. We don't want to talk to you no more. I'm going to give you five minutes to go talk to your imaginary husband. Mm-hmm. Take, you got five minutes, 300 seconds to go please your husband. Uh, how many women are, are um, who are over 34 years old who are at the point to where you're willing to uh, change your standards? Because if you're over 30 and unmarried, I mean, I'm going to say over 34. If you're over 30 and unmarried, ladies, you got to change. You got to drop those that list of stuff. You got to drop that list of stuff because if you're over 30, I don't care even if you find that you're over 30, you don't have leverage over these guys. You don't have leverage over my boys. You got leverage over maybe the other 80% of men, but this is the top 20% of men. You don't need, you don't have, you don't have that. We need the KPIs. You need key performance indicators. Huh? If you make it over 30 and I'm married, if you make it over 30 and you're not married, you got to really start, you got to put your, the, a smart, if a man could put his mind in a woman's body, men, if they were in a woman's position that way, men would sit back and say, you know what? I'm going to get around a bunch of, uh, high value potential men and I'm going to get as humble as hell and I'm going to learn about what they want and I am going to become that because that sounds like safety. You know what safety is, Mr. Bowtie, for a woman? A safety for a woman would be to become uh, the best housewife material possible so she could get a man to come in and save her from herself. Oh, did I say that out loud? So he could come save you from yourself. Toya says, I'm okay. Okay, thank you. I'm Army. Ooh, Army. Ooh. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Um, save you from yourself. A lot of a lot of people, women need to be saved for themselves. And not in a negative way, because you're better off being with the blue Henry or Blake Henry or a member of the hit squad. Uh, we're past the hit squad. You're better with blue or Blake being the, um, the administrator of his empire. Or would you rather stay out here working? Oh, keep you. Yeah. yeah. Or would you rather stay out here working? All right. I don't want to. I don't want to lag this on. Uh, we got. I'm, let's click to 100 minutes. Another 14 minutes. At the end of the day, take this as new knowledge going forward. It will be wise. <laughs> Not gonna go to the army because the army has a lot of stigma when it comes to women. Army and navy. Okay, for you ladies who are in the military, I will just tell you. Stigma. Men look at women who've been in the, in the Navy and think you've been run through because of the sheer amount of sex that happens on ships. And in, this, and, and in the Army, same thing. I'm just telling you. So you're going to have to um, deal with that. Uh, but what was I saying? Look, Ladies, you are survivors. You are adaptable. Adapt into your femininity and learn and start doing what your white counterparts are doing. What your white and your Asian counterparts are doing. Learn from your white and Asian counterparts and go talk to your Hispanic counterparts because you're not as quick to go talk to your white counterpart. The issue between white women and black women, the, 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 the dynamics are just off. Asian women, y'all probably don't get along with them that well, So, but more likely you can go talk to a Latina and say, how do you put up with it? And, and, and let them school you. Swirling is not an authentic solution. Live life well. What are you talking about? Swirling is not an authentic solution. What are you, what are you talking about? Swirling. Boy, howdy. I tell you what, 
Um, in my opinion, far too many black women worry about silly shit like swirling and colorism and all that. Yeah. Job number one would be to find a husband. Job number one should be to be find to find a husband. Find a good husband and be a, and be a wife to him. That would be job number one. Instead of worrying about a bunch of other stuff. That would I would say that uh, far too many people get preoccupied with a bunch of stuff that got nothing to do with them. Be a wife. Be a mother. Be a wife, be a mother. I mean, instead of having all, instead of having all these opinions. Instead of being having all these opinions which do nothing but just does, does these opinions make your bed? Are these opinions do they warm your bed at night? Do these opinions soothe your jangled nerves? Do these opinions nibble on your air and blow and kiss you on the back of your neck? Do these opinions grab you and hold you and make you feel hell? Do these opinions break you off something proper like? Do these opinions do any of that for you? Do these opinions make it make it carry you around your other girlfriends to where you where they know, damn, she got a winner. Or all you and your girlfriend sitting around talking about the same thing, all these damn opinions. Wouldn't you rather be the girl that comes over with the 1.5 or 2 carat ring? Listening to all your friends' opinions. And you're just like, mm-hmm. Yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah it's hard out. Yeah, man. I'm on our break. Yeah, mm, All that stuff. Ding, ding, dong. Hold on. Uh-oh. Well, I got to get home to make dinner for my hubby. Yep. Got to get make home make dinner for my hubby. My hubby, bubby. Hubby, bubby. Yeah, I got to get home to make, make dinner for Blue. Blue Henry Bay, yeah, but girl, I'll see you next week. No, I can't do it tomorrow. You know, married woman problems. But you, but y'all gone, girl, gone on a girl's trip to Vegas. Hot girl summer. Hey, see you in three months. Mm-hmm. God, I'm so glad I'm married. You know, <laughs> I'll tell you this. Women who get married... Oh, uh, more often than they sit around and talk to their friends one way, but they tell me, go, I'm so glad I'm married. I'm so glad I'm married. I ain't got to be out here doing that shit and figuring out which dick to do and nothing. Da, 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 da. Thank you, uh, Peter's sister. And you're like, uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then Peter's sister go home and be like, hey, Blue. And she's thinking, you know, when I left this morning, he had them stinky ass work boots and them funky socks. And then. He spilled cream on the floor. And then when I went to go use the bathroom, he left the toilet up last night. Then I went to use the toothpaste and left the cap off the toothpaste. And he did all this shit. Then you go sit around your career girlfriends and you start listening to all their problems. And you're like, oh, see what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get this little thing that actually uh, drops the toilet seat back down. And, um, I'm going to get a little thing by the front door with some renews it in it. So he can just throw his socks right there like a little dispensary. And, you know, it's just a little cream, you know, no biggie. And a cap off the toothpaste, it probably need to air out anyway. What in the heck is name? What's going on? Hey, uh, Asta, I need you to go ahead and uh, chill out on the language, fam. Chill out on. Does and does not care. I'm serious. I'm serious. And when you have stuff that works, far better. Look, man, as a divorced guy, I will tell you, none of us planned on being this way. We are we evolved to pair off into working groups. A family unit is the default position and the best position for 80 to 90% of us. Holidays, I mean, aren't you tired of going home? The holidays are just empty. 
you don't even you don't even celebrate them anymore. Thanksgiving don't matter. Christmas there's no don't matter. I mean, it's, it does doesn't matter. You just you're just living, living by yourself until you die. When are you gonna give all that up? When are you gonna say enough? I, I submit. I quit. You would rather have somebody to chronicle your life with. Because ladies, unlike Q's run the world, shout out to the Q's, Tommy Dog in the house. Unlike men, ladies, we can still at 50 years old decide to, you know what, get our shit together as it were and still go get a young wife and, and still make up for a little lost time. You can't. Ladies, your decisions have to come quicker and and and, and, and last longer. Do not Why do you dis down black women? Everyone's not the same. Well, here you go, Karen Thomas. Yeah, you are all the same. Yes. You all black yeah, black women are the same. Yeah. Women are the same. Yeah, yeah, you are. You're not special. It's general it's generalizations because it, it's broad generalizations because it's generally true. And the only people that come over here talking about making specifics for somebody I don't know are upset women. Karen, what does your husband say about it? When you when your husband starts to talk about black women, does he make a does he say something for all all the, all the millions of you? Come on, Karen. Here you go. You can come set me straight though. Tell me how I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong about it all. I don't know nothing, y'all. Karen said that, why do I down people? Down. Is there any way anybody can say, tell any kind of truth about black women like Karen that they will accept? Is there any way that anybody can say any truth about black women like Karen that they will accept? Hmm. Anything. Can, who can tell them? Oh, Derek Jackson? Right. All right. I mean, she came through here with the with the mad face invasion and the and, and why do you down black women? Everyone is not the same. Hater. Mad face, mad face, mad face. I mean, she came in here like like she was saying something. I mean, goodness, Karen. What do you want people to tell you? Well, I'll tell you what. This is what you do. You look at your left ring finger and you tell me what it says. Does it say occupied or unoccupied? If it were a hotel, would the vacancy sign be on? <laughs> or would it say no vacancy? Karen Thomas, does your vacancy sign say own or no vacancy? What y'all think? What do y'all think? Here she, here's the comment. What do y'all think? Y'all think a woman who makes this comment has a vacancy sign? Hmm? Hmm? I'm about as nice as they come, as long as you're being reasonable. But anyway, I got to get up off of here. Um, unlike Karen, I got company. Unlike Karen, I have company. And yes, I had company earlier today. And the beautiful thing about these companies is they know about each other. It's gangster like that. Karen, you got any company coming over? Karen, this almost this is past eleven o'clock on Saturday night. You got a date? You got to You got anybody to come over to rub your feet, kiss you on the back of your neck, whisper sweet in your whisper things in your left ear, put their tongue in your left ear and wiggle it around and make you all moist. You got anybody to come by and rub you on your back and hit those spots and just have you release? Anybody to help you get one of them? Oh. oh. 
you got anybody to help you come by and get that release, sister girl? Anybody? Hmm? Got anybody to come on and just work out that last little kink? Do you? Do you? Do you? Uh-uh, you don't, do you? That's why you over here upset. Because you have a brother over here who has the, the heart to tell women what he sees. It's like when I was on the Obsidian show the other day, that angry woman, my my lady friend was sitting back saying, Jesus, this woman sounds so angry. She said, I would love to talk to her, but she's just so angry. I'm like, I don't want, mm -mm. And, y and y'all will never see any of my, the people I deal with. Mm -mm. That's not true. Raised as a Christian woman, 30 years with the same man. Right. <laughs> Best one of the night, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She said, that's not true. Raised as a Christian woman, 30 years with the same man. <laughs> Woo, shit, you a good liar. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Passion of the Christ on your ass. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> you can't make this up. These Bible thumping wannabe Christian women. Oh, Jesus Christ. Go back and listen to the show, sweetheart. Oh, my God. They come straight out of Central Casting. Oh, shit. All right, guys, I got to go on that one. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, fuck. She said, not true. I'm a Christian woman. Been with the same man for 30 years. <laughs> Woo! One more to go on. Karen, be gone, demon. Be gone. <laughs> Karen, she is a demon. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pazuzu, I see you. Be gone, Pazuzu. You and your good lies. He's telling them good lies, y'all. Karen telling them good lies. We see you, Karen. Tell him good lies, Karen. In this moment, yes, I can cannot see say what's, what's wrong or right. No. It's not hard to fool me. Because no. I'm addicted to the good lies. Everybody singing for Karen. To the edge of it all. So tell you goodbye. Cause I'm fine no matter what. Cause I'm fine no matter what. Yeah. Susceptible now. Before the moment flies. Ooh. So, so tell you goodbye. Bye, no man.